Um, the head gasket only goes on one way. This area has got to meet that passage there. So it goes like so. The dowels help hold in place for me. My cylinder head, um, I need to assemble as well. I have no valves or anything in it currently. So I will show you how to assemble that right now. This is my cylinder head. Uh, I can see that I do have a seal on one of the guides and no seal on that one. That is my intake valve. Intake valve has a seal. Exhaust valve does not. So when I assemble, I usually use this rag. I put the rag on my bench so that I can hold my valves up when I go install them. So my two valves here, I have my, my spring, two springs, and they are the same. I have some adjusters and some retainers that I'm going to need. Just taking them out of my folder here. So I have two retainers and I also have a small rotator. Now the rotator, it looks like so. It's quite tiny and that goes on my exhaust. Uh, it helps keep that exhaust valve rotating. And in that picture, the photo I had showed you earlier, um, it does go through a lot of those steps in here as well. If you are looking at um, the service manual, the service manual, I put in the link down in the description as well. It will take you to all the specifications that you need for measuring and looking for tolerances and, and whatnot for your engine. Um, this, I, I'll send a link to this as well because it's uh, very handy to have. Um, so when I do my valves, typically what I do is I put my valves in. Again, oil, engine oil. Um, just on the stem, just to make sure it's lubricated when we first fire it up. Uh, intake valve is always bigger. Exhaust valve is smaller, and you can see it's got dark, so it's been the exhaust side. I just basically put, I'm going to put it this way so you guys can see it better. Oh, my valve fell out. I'm on air. Uh, so, I use my rag to hold my valves up so I don't have to push underneath my spring. Whichever valve I happen to be doing first, if I'm doing my exhaust valve, my two retainers are different. Um, one, one, this one here, holds that small rotator, and this one does not. So if I'm doing the exhaust valve first, I got to be sure I'm using the one with the larger uh, bore there so I can put my my um, rotator on there. When I go to do my valves, you can see that I do have a slot, a bigger slot in the bottom side. Oops, sorry, bottom slide. And I'm going to roll it through there and then roll it to the top. I think you guys can probably see. I'll try like that. So as I push down, I come, I bring it toward me through. So I put the valve, as I go through that spot. Hold on here. I need a better rag in there. So I push down, it's, you can do it by hand, it's not too hard. And then you'll roll it back that way and then it locks itself into place. I take my rotator and I drop it right on top of that guy. My intake valve, the same thing. I do the exact same thing. I push it this way through my, and then I push it toward center again. That locks my two valves in place. Cylinder head is pretty much together. Um, next step is to mount it. And to do that, I have my dowels. And these dowels help me support the cylinder head. 
so it won't slide off on me. My cylinder head only goes one way. Again, if I'm not sure, I flip it over and I can see my two ports here. This is where my, my push rods run through my cylinder head and my push rods run through the bottom part of here. So it has to go that way. And again, it will hang nicely like so. My four bolts are all exactly the same, the same, same length. And of course, there's a torque specification as well. And this one goes inside really close to the valves. Um, this one, oh, it's a 14 mil. I'll just use a ratchet to snug this guy up. And again, the torque specification on this one is on that same paper. Again, you can use, get the torque specifications from the service manual, but I find that that, um, that paper is pretty good as far as telling me what I need for all those specifications. Snug it, don't tighten it. I'm gonna curl cross it. I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna do um, one after another. I'm gonna crisscross across the cylinder head and then I'll do the same. The next one, it doesn't matter which way you go. I just snug it just barely tight because I am going to torque these. Now I can assemble from this point. I can put my connecting rods in and my rocker arms and my other valve components and I can adjust the valves too. I need to adjust the valves on this guy. So I've snugged these up and my torque spec for my cylinder head bolts are I'm just looking for them here, sorry. 35 Newton meters for my cylinder head bolts. Um, I'll use the same torque wrench. I'm going to go to this click type torque wrench instead. It's 3 8 drive. A little bigger than the other one. The other one's a quarter. Um, the specification this is 35 Newton meters. I can convert that over to inch pounds. So my 25 foot pounds, 35 Newton meters. Um, 35 Newton meters is approximately about 325 inch pounds. So I'll set my torque wrench to that. And on these torque wrenches, if you've never seen before, I just turn my dial here and I can adjust it to whatever I want. So about 325-ish. Again, it's a 14 millimeter. And I am also going to crisscross this one when I torque it as well. Uh, I gotta hold this a little bit because this engine's gonna be want to move on me. If I tick click, I'm gonna go right across to the other corner. And I'll see for that click again. I'm gonna click, and then it doesn't matter which way I go at this point, I can just choose one. Click, and the last one. And I like to go back and just double check and just make sure I didn't miss one by accident. So I get to click right away.
everything on this engine is aluminum so the for us the tendency to have a problem when putting things back on of student over tightening is huge okay so next step my valve train I can I can assemble that now um, I have my push rods here and they go down here and they'll sit inside that lifter that's down there it'll fall into place I can use a light if I'm not sure they're in the right spot but they don't really have much place to go if I turn the engine over my push rod should move because the camshaft's turning with and my the next thing I would do I drop my rocker arms on uh, rocker arms typically we pair them we keep them with they're the same they're nothing different about them but we usually pair them with, with which side we took them off on so remember um, they sit the ball end goes onto the push rod this end onto the valve and they sit like so from there I use my my adjusters which are these guys they adjust so I put them in and I'm just gonna put them down so that they are just snug so I have to set this engine up still and what I mean by that is I need to roll my engine around so that it is at top dead center between the power or compressed combustion and or compression and power stroke um, it's easier to do with the flywheel on because it has an arrow on it that actually you can see. So I'm going to leave those for the moment and leave them so they're just a little loose. 